Hello, and welcome to Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. This series of short, skill-based videos is brought to you by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's National Conservation Training Center in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. If you have a couple of minutes, pull up a chair and pick up a new conservation skill or maybe refresh an old one on topics ranging from fish culture to bird identification to stream restoration. Enjoy. Hello. My name is Matthew Patterson. I'm a course leader at the National Conservation Training Center, and I'm going to lead you through the skill of practice today. So what's the lesson for today? Today we're talking about determining fish length. Now in previous videos, we've talked about calculating density index and flow index, and both of these use average length of the fish in the calculations. So the question is, how do I determine the average length of my fish without getting out in the raceway and measuring all the fish? Well, this is a two-step process. Step one, you want to complete a sample count and calculate the number of fish per pound in the raceway. Second, you'll use something called condition factor to convert that fish per pound calculation to fish length. And we're going to walk you through this entire process. So as we've done with the previous videos, there'll be a skill demonstration where I show you how to do the calculation, and then there'll be a skill practice, which will allow you an opportunity to practice the calculations yourself. So the first thing you wanna do when running a sample count is to crowd up the fish. It's important to get the fish crowded together so that they aren't sorting in the raceway based on size, and there's an equal chance of getting any size fish in your sample. And you see here in the video, you want to get some water in a bucket and then tear that bucket so that you get a zero weight. And then you want to dip your net into the crowded fish all the way to the bottom. Fish can sort vertically as well. So you want to make sure every fish has the same chance of getting collected. Then you drain off all the water because you're getting a weight and you want to make sure you're weighing fish and not weighing water. So all the fish in the net get dumped into the bucket, and then you record the weight. Finally, one at a time, you put the fish back into the raceway and count every fish that went into the bucket. Now, when these guys were taking a sample, this was at Happy Hatchery, and they were raising rainbow trout, they collected the following five sample counts from raceway B. They collected five because the more samples you collect, the better your data is going to be. They had the first collection was 149 fish that weighed 0.25 pounds, 118 fish that weighed 0.2 pounds, 152 fish weighed 0.25 pounds, 119 fish weighed 0.2 pounds, and 140 fish that weighed 0.24 pounds. The next step is to plug this into our equation. The equation is the average fish per pound equals the total of all fish sampled divided by the total pounds sampled. So we plugged our numbers in here for each sample. We add all the total fish across the top and the total pound sample on the bottom. If you plug this into your calculator, you'll get 678 total fish sampled divided by a total weight of 1.14 pounds. When you run this through the calculator, you get 595 fish per pound. The next thing that we have to do once we have fish per pound is to convert that to length. And to do that, we need to use the length weight tables in fish hatchery management in the first edition, which you see over here to the right. And you'll notice that rainbow trout, if you look down the list of species there on the right, has a condition factor of 4,000 times 10 to the minus 7. That's the condition factor that we're going to use moving forward. Now, condition factor is different for every species. It also can be different within a species at different hatcheries. We're not going to go into great detail on this, but if you want to calculate your own condition factor for a given species at your hatchery, you would take a sample of 100 to 150 fish and weigh those fish and then divide the fish weight by the average length cubed in inches, 
get your condition factor. So here is the table that we're going to use in fish, fish hatchery management. If you go to the back, you'll notice the condition factors are listed at the top of the page. You want to make sure you have the one that says C equal to 4,000 times 10 to the minus 7. In our case, we had 595 fish per pound. So in the table on that third column over where it says fish per pound, you'll follow that down until you find something close to 595 fish per pound. And then you'll come across the table to the left to find the length in inches. In this case, the length is 1.61 inches. As always, after you see the skilled demonstration, you have a chance to practice. So now it's your turn. I would recommend pausing this video after I read through the problem, work the problem on your own, and then come back for the answers. So here is the skill practice. At the Good Times Hatchery, you collected the following sample counts of rainbow trout in raceway number 11. You had 103 fish that weighed 1.32 pounds, 129 fish that weighed 1.67 pounds, 180 fish that weighed 2.24 pounds, 111 fish that weighed 1.47 pounds, and 137 fish that weighed 1.71 pounds. Calculate the average fish length. So I would go ahead and pause it here, and when you come back, we'll walk you through the answers. Okay, welcome back. The first thing you should have done was calculate average fish per pound. This is done by dividing the total number of fish sampled by the total number of pounds sampled. We plug our numbers in, total fish sampled added up on the top, total pounds sampled added up on the bottom. We had 660 total fish sampled and 8.41 pounds. The average fish per pound is 78.5 fish per pound. The next step is then to use the tables to convert 78.5 fish per pound to inches. So we see the table over here to the right. Again, you go to the far right column under fish per pound. You work your way down until you find something close to 78.5. And then work your way over to inches. You can see these are 3.17 inches in length. I also wanted to draw your attention to the fact that uh, there are calculators on the AFS fish culture section if you don't have access to fish hatchery management tables. Here we're on the fish culture section. If you go down to resources and fish hatchery management calculators, here you can see the calculators that says do the math. And then there's a length weight calculator and length weight tables. And if you pull up the calculator, it looks like this. You can see there are several species listed, there are condition factors. And then if you scroll down under compute weight, when length is known, you can type a length in here, say six inches, hit enter, and it'll give you fish per pound. You can also compute length when the weight is known and do your calculations that way. So you'd like to learn more? I would recommend signing up for the Cold Water Fish Culture course at the National Conservation Training Center. And if you hold on after this video, I'll walk you through how to find that course on our website. Thanks for joining us. If you have questions about this particular skill or any other skill related to fish culture, or if you have a question about any class at the National Conservation Training Center, you can contact me at the email or the phone listed below. Thank you. Okay, as promised, I was going to show you how to find cold water fish culture on our website. The best thing to do is just go to Google and type in National Conservation Training Center. Hit enter. Typically, the first search that comes up, open our website, and then go to the search bar here and type in cold water fish culture hit search the first pdf that comes up will take you to this pdf 
with more information about the course, including course description, course objectives, target audience, and then down at the bottom you see uh, what course is coming up next. Thanks again for joining us for Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like or hit the subscribe button, share this video with a friend, or even check out one of the many other skill-based videos we have in this series. Have a great day, and always remember, the beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you.